so this lesson we start with object oriented programming in java language and the agenda of this lesson is to have the introduction to object oriented programming and also about the class and object so what is this object oriented programming so it is a programming paradigm is nothing but how we can develop an application so my requirement is i want to develop a project a banking project so what what methodology which i am using so it may be either procedure oriented programming pop it can be object oriented programming oop or it can be aspect oriented programming aop so any program if you talk about every program may contain mainly two parts one is data and the other one is function or method so this procedure oriented programming is based on data as well as function but the data and the functions are treated separately that's what procedural oriented programming so procedural programming is about writing procedures or methods that perform operations on the data so data is one part and method is another part it is treated separately whereas in object oriented programming it is about creating objects from the name itself we can understand object oriented programming this type of programming is purely based on object so it is working with the data and methods together it contains both the data and the methods whereas procedural oriented program so data is one part method or function is another part so if you are having a global variable you consider a c programming language when you write a c program that c program may have global variables so that global variables can be accessed by all the functions because data is separate function is separate so that data can be accessed by all the function there is no security for data and so many lines of code you need to write and this object oriented programming is a programming pr paradigm based on the concept of objects which can contain the data in the form of fields often called as properties or attributes or we call it as member data and the code in the form of method and this object oriented programming is purely i mean it is based on class and objects so all object oriented programming have got so many other features principles like inheritance polymorphism encapsulation abstraction but mainly object oriented programming is based on two things one is class and another is object so what is a class in object oriented programming a class is a concept or class is a blueprint using which an object can be created so what is a concept for example if i ask you what is a car when we say what is a car we know that a car every car have got a registration number car has got an engine number a car has got a model so to 2020 model 2018 model which model is that car has got color fuel petrol or diesel is required so clutch brake accelerator so these are all the properties of a car that is what we talk about a concept so what is a car so we know car has got these properties like registration number engine number model color clutch brake accelerator these are all the items and also a car have got different functions so we are able to start the car we are able to accelerate the car we can reverse the car so these are all the functionalities now for example you see starting a car a function a method or accelerating a car or reversing a car to perform any of this operation what is required an item is required which item one item petrol or diesel is required so a class is a concept a concept contains items and functionality and each functionality of an item is used is using a particular property or particular properties 
so i an item of a concept is used by performing a particular function a class is something like that a fan a computer so whatever things are there in the real world if you talk about it has got only two parts one is the items of that and the other one is functionalities of that but coming to a programming language like java a class is a user defined data type in java we have got uh, eight primitive data types like byte short int long float double char boolean these are the eight primitive data types of java but if i want to develop a mis project management information project i need to store the employee details so i need to have some employee so we know that every employee have got employee number name of the employee designation of the employee salary of the employee address of the employee etc number of dependents the pan card details social security number bank details blood group all these properties will come for an employee but this type of data is not available in java so java has got eight primitive data types but we want to create our own data type of type employee with this employee number name designation salary address and some methods or suppose if you want to develop a banking project so in a banking project what type of data is required different type of data is required but mainly we require account type data so that account type data what all things basically it comes every bank account have got an account number the name of the account holder balance amount it is not that contact number email id address of the person gender of the person all that things will come but in our example we take account number name of the account holder and the balance amount and what are the functionalities we are able to withdraw the amount withdraw the amount from my account we are able to deposit the amount so the balance amount is being affected so withdraw or deposit function is using the amount balance amount so this is what we talk about a class so class is a user defined data type java have got primitive data types but to develop an application to develop a project we need to have our own data type like employee like bank account like a ticket so we develop a ticketing application a bank a flight ticket application so ticket have got pnr number the name of the passenger date of travel time of travel from which airport to which airport which flight all these properties comes and it has got the functionalities also now when you talk about an object we seen an employee so we created an employee type data that is what class now i am an employee so my name is sunil i have got my own employee number i have got my own salary i have got my own designation so i am an employee type so what is an object an object is the real instance or living instance of a class an object is created from the definition of a class a class is a blueprint from which individual objects are created so we discussed about a car when you see a real car on the road if you see a real car we can say that car that particular thing this is a car we say that if i ask you by pointing to a real car if i ask you what is this you say this is a car why we are saying that this is a car because it is it has got all the properties of car type car we know what are all the properties it has got what all functionality everything is available on that physical thing so we say this is a car we can have any number of objects also now when you see an employee we know employee number employee name designation salary address so we can create multiple object for example you see so four people so this is employee one the other person is employee two the same way other two employees so emp1 emp2 emp3 and emp4 we call as objects what type of object they are they are all type of employee type object 
because every employee have got their own employee number employee name designation salary address each person have got their own thing these are all real employees so this person the first employee have got his own employee number the first person have got his own name his own designation his own salary his own address this is what we talk about an object as a syntax when you see how to create a class a class is created by using the keyword class followed by the class name inside this block a class may contain properties or attributes or member data any name and also it has got functionality and how to create an object or it's not that only this a class may contain fields that is nothing but properties or attributes or member data methods but in a real class we can have constructors class can have block a static block or it can have initialization block we see that and a class may contain other class a class may contain some inner interfaces also that is called as nested class or nested interface a class can be defined inside another class all these things may come inside a class then to create an object new keyword is used for creating an object i want to create one employee so new what type of object employee type object so new object type that is what the object and it is identified with a reference so object type object reference is equal to new object type as an example new employee is the object and its reference is employee emp to identify that object so i am an object i have got my own employee number my own official name my own address i have got my designation salary all that things i have but i am identified with my name that name is nothing but the reference the pointer to its memory so when you see the physical structure of that so one example when you see employee have got empno employee number integer type employee name string type salary float type numbers with the decimal point so we created a class called employee no methods we defined now we are creating an object employee emp or employee sunil is equal to new employee when you say new employee a new object is being created where the object is being created in the heap memory so in the jvm java runtime and java java runtime environment or java virtual machine jre contains jvm java virtual machine so it has got an architecture it has got different memory for example in our house we have got different rooms one is drawing room bedroom dining room kitchen study room computer room so different area each area is for one or the other purpose the same way in the jvm architecture it has got different memories one such memory is called as the heap memory where all the objects are being placed so one memory heap memory this employee contains what empno e name and sal so when you create an object of employee so memory is allotted in the heap it will have three locations for storing its employee number emp name and salary of this object new employee then what values will be given by default each member data will be assigned with its default values emp no is integer type so what default value will come zero integer is zero is the default value emp name is string type the default value is null and salary is float type the default value is 0.0 so new employee work is over in the heap memory one object is created second object another place so i am an employee my employee number my name and my salary is specific to me me is nothing but object reference so new employee this is happening and this emp is the reference that reference is coming in another space another room stack memory emp is pointing to this particular location 
So this EMP have got EMP and no EMP name and sal. So if you want to access that properties of this EMP using this EMP object is this that can be referred with reference with EMP. So we can access it by using EMP dot EMP and no EMP dot in name not actually name EMP dot EMP name actually it is e name and EMP dot sal. That's the way we are accessing that. Now we will see this one in a practical way. Hope you are clear with this one. Happy learning. In this practical lesson, we are going to implement the previous lesson thing. So practice. The same example we are going to implement, we create a class called employee, which has got three properties, then we create an object, then we will access the properties by using dot operator. So for that purpose, let's create a new directory in C drive. I'm creating a directory with the name of Java. So I created a directory and there we want to write our programs. So to write a Java program, we can go for any of the editors. You can use notepad or notepad plus plus or edit plus. In the next lesson, we will see how to do this project in Eclipse IDE. So I'm just opening this edit plus. We write a new Java program and the Java program we call the class as employee. And it has got the main method. A standalone Java program have got the main method. So we provide the employee number, integer EMP and no string name of the employee and float salary of the employee. Now inside this, we are creating an object. So create an employee object, employee type object, create an employee type object. So we know the way of creation, new employee object is created and it is referenced by EMP. So employee EMP or any reference can be given. So we created an object after creating the object. We want to access the properties, access the EMP employee object properties with reference using reference. So the reference is nothing but EMP. So EMP dot EMP and no EMP dot EMP and no then a separator i'm using a concatenation then a separator so we will get the output as by default what what values are coming so the values are nothing but emp dot emp and now will be zero emp dot e name will be null and emp dot sal will be 0, 0.0 so with a separator we want to display so plus concatenation emp dot e name plus a concatenation a separator EMP dot sal. Let me save this program in our folder C drive. We create a directory Java and we save this program as employee.java. So we got employee.java. Let us save this. So in our folder, we got employee.java C drive. Java folder contains employee. Now we need to compile it. So we are compiling this in the command prompt. Start button CMD. Let's come to C drive, CD slash, come to Java directory, change directory. CD slash is coming to the parent directory, CD Java. There we got a program called employee.java. So let's compile this Java C employee.java. So this code is introduced for the people who are already aware of Java, how, what is a standalone Java program, how to write a Java program so that if you are aware for them. So cannot find symbol. What is the error? EMP dot EMP and no EMP dot E name. But what is that property we given name? So actually it is E name. CMP have got E name. So we are accessing that. Now save it, compile the program. So error cannot find symbol emp.ename 
so that employee class is not having emp e name property it was having name we changed it into e name now you compile so whenever you compile a java program it is creating a dot class file employee dot class now let's run this java employee so let's run this program java employee we are getting the value 0 null and 0, 0.0 so this is what we have seen practically so we have got a class in the main method we are creating an object of that class then that object properties we are accessing hope you are clear with this one happy learning So in this lesson, we are going to see the previous thing with the Eclipse. So how to create an object. So employee object we will create in Eclipse. And also we will see what are the different ways we are able to change the state of an object. So EMP object, the value of EMP and no, value of ename and value of sal is what we call it as the state of an object. So every object is associated with a state member data values methods that means behavior of an object and also identity so state behavior and identity now in order to change the state of an object it can be done by using the reference it can be done with the help of method and also by using constructor so let us create a program in eclipse so we got our eclipse environment so in this SIT project, creating a new class, right click, new Java class. And the class name is employee. Employee is the class name and we want to have the main method. We are including main method, starting point of a Java class. In this main method, so employee class, we are providing the properties EMP and now. Then string E name or name then float salary these are all the properties now we create an object of employee same example what we done in the previous lesson so employee is equal to new employee then after creating the employee object let us access its properties system dot out dot print ln to display system dot out dot print ln emp's emp and no plus separator emp dot e name plus a separator emp dot sal now let us run this program so let's right click or run on this icon when you run this application we will get the output in the console 0 null and 0, 0.0 now first thing is to change the state of an object changing the state changing the state of object using reference so which is a reference here emp so that emp dot emp and no is equal to 101 emp dot e name is equal to sunil and providing the name of the employee as sunil emp dot sal is equal to maybe 2500.5 f a floating point value so employee number employee name and salary with the reference we are changing it was actually 0 null 0, 0 0.0 now let us display this again so let me copy that statement then save this and run this program the same employee object it was 0 null 0, 0 0.0 let us run this and see what happens it becomes 101 sunil and 2500.5 in the previous lessons we seen the memory structure emp and no e name and sal was given with the default value 0 null 0, 0.0 but we are changing the state of object using reference now if i want to display that what we can do is a class can have properties three properties or member data or attributes one method a static method and also we can have a normal method void return type is void display properties 
display properties is name of the method. So what is this method to do? Every method is used for performing some operation. What operation this method is going to do? It is only going to display S yes, out, control key and space bar, short code. It is going to display the employee number, then a separator, E name, which object is calling that objects, employee number, employee name, as well as salary will be displayed. So this is one method. So in this case, you don't need to write like this. If you're not writing only one time, we'll get the employee number, name and salary of that employee. Now using that object EMP dot display properties. EMP dot display properties, the control will come to this method. And that objects EMP and no E name and salary will be displayed. So run this. We are getting that value. Now the second way to change the state of an object, changing the state of object using a method. So in that, I don't want to change the employee number. I just want to change the name of the employee and salary of the employee. For that purpose, we define one another method void set properties, set properties. Directly we are providing EMPNO equal to no EMPNO. I'm not going to change only E name. If you want, you can change also E name. I'm giving it as Naveen and the salary also we are making it as 5000 F a floating point value or directly 5000 also integer value can be assigned to float variable. So we are changing the E name and salary value. So let this object call set properties method emp dot set properties. When it calls the set properties method, control will come to this method and it execute these statements. So that in the memory of emp in the heap memory, emp and no will be 101 only. Sunil value will be replaced with Naveen and 2500.5 will be replaced with 5000. Let us call that method to display the details again. So display properties we are calling again second time. Run this program. When you run this, what is that we are getting the output? 0, null, 0, 0.0. 0. Changing the state of object by using the reference and changing the state of object using a method. And the third way of changing the state of an object is by using constructor that we'll see in the coming lesson. Happy learning. This lesson is about constructors in a class. So what is a constructor? Constructor is a special type of method of a class. Normally, a class contains properties and methods, a constructor, special type of method. And we know every method should have a name. So for a constructor, the name of the constructor method is same as that of the class name. So if my class name is employee, the constructor method name also should be employee. And a normal method will have a return type, void display details. Void is a return type that tells that it is not returning anything. But a constructor method is not having an explicit return type. So the major difference between a constructor and a normal method is a normal method should have a return type void deposit or boolean withdraw. So that boolean and void are the return types. But a constructor two, two things. The name of the constructor is same as that of the class name. And it should not have an explicit return type. If you write the return type, then it becomes a normal method. The fourth point a constructor is used to initialize the member data of an object, the purpose of a constructor, to give the default values for the member data of an object. And when a constructor get executed, a normal method, if you see, that get executed whenever it is being called by an object. So EMP dot display details. 
So EMP object is calling the display details. That time it will get executed. And a normal method can be executed any number of times, can be called any number of times. But a constructor is called when an object or an instance of a class is created. And every time, so whenever you create an object of a class using the new keyword, at, le at least one constructor is called. There may be a possibility that two constructors also may get called through constructor chaining. But for sure, one constructor will get executed at any cost. And the constructors are of two types. One is called as default constructor or zero argument constructor and constructor with the arguments or parameterized constructor, user defined constructor and compiler defined constructor. That's what default constructor. So what is basically a default constructor? Compiler defined constructor. See, just imagine we created a class or we return a class class account in our program and we have not defined any constructor with a method with the name of the class no return type we have not written so when you compile that program java compiler will create a constructor of its own that constructor is called as a default constructor java compiler provides a default constructor at the time of con compilation by default if no constructors are written in the class so if there is no constructor in a class, compiler automatically creates a default constructor. For example, I return a class called employee or a class called account. So this, we have not written any property or any method. Then we have got, when you compile this program, it creates employee.class. And in that employee.class, it will create a class file. It contains, not account, it should be employee constructor. It will have employee. So this is mistake. So it will have employee constructor. So we will see practically. So let us create a class. So inside our edit plus, I write a new Java program with the name of account. So creating a Java class with the name of account, no main method also. An empty class and I save it as account.java. Account.java is a program. So let's compile this program. DIR. In the previous lessons, employee.java, employee.class. And we compile this Java C account.java. Account.java, we compile. Remember, there's no properties and there's no methods. If you want to see, it has got account.class. A bytecode file is being created. And if you want to see the contents of that, Java P java profiler and you just provide the name of the class it will show you whatever properties what all methods what all constructors are there inside a class it will show i press enter java p is nothing but java profiler when you see the java class no contents are there available inside but when the program is being compiled class account compiled from account.java but what is that we can see we can see a constructor account without having any parameters. So constructor, a special method of a class. Name of the constructor method is same as that of the class name and no return type. So this is a constructor. And when it is created at the time of compilation, compiler created that. That is called as the default compiler, a default constructor. So Java P, when you say Java P employee, this employee class also have got a constructor. CMP and no. Name, salary, this constructor. But we have not defined that constructor. We were having only main method. But the compiler have created a constructor. So this main method return type is void. But employee, a method, no return type at all. So that's what we talk about a constructor. So the mistake here is, it is not... It should be class employee or the constructor will be employee. Now, one example when we see, you see we got a class employee. Class have got three properties, EMP and no, name and sal. We defined a constructor, you see, a method, a special method. Name is same as that of the class name, no return type. If you provide the return type void employee, then it becomes a normal method. 
I just returned some star system dot out dot printl and five stars used to initialize the member data of an object, and it has got a method normal method display details. So display details is a user defined method, a normal method, but this employee is the constructor. Why it is called as constructor? A method name of the method is same as that of class name. No explicit return type. So when this method get executed. Whenever an object of a class is being created, now what we do is we'll have constructor test. In this constructor test that contains employee class also, constructor test main method creating three objects: new employee first object, again new employee second object, new employee third object. So whenever you compile this program, Java C constructor test dot Java, you compile it. Compiler will create constructor test dot class as well as employee dot class, and when you run this program, Java constructor test. If I press enter, what happens? The control will come to the main method. Then the first line of code is employee emp one is equal to new employee creating an object. So when we create an object, a constructor method employee with no parameter. This is also employee with no parameter. A constructor gets executed automatically whenever an object of a class is being created. So, first line. So that time, control will come to the constructor, and in the constructor, four lines of code. The first line is system dot out dot println of star. So we are getting the value star, first star. Then emp once emp n now becomes hundred and one. Emp once name becomes Sachin, and EMP one salary becomes two thousand five hundred point zero. That is happening in the memory. It's not displaying anything. Now the next line of code again object creation. So what will happen? New employee. It will call the constructor. It will display this, and EMP two's EMP and no name and salary becomes same. So we'll see the output is star. Then the third also object constructor is called. So from this we can understand a constructor will get executed automatically whenever an object of a class is being created, and it is used to initialize the member data. Three objects are created automatically. It is calling the constructor. We got this. Now emp one dot display details. So what happens? It will call this display details, and emp n no name and sal of emp one will be displayed. Then the second one, emp two dot display details. Again, this method will be called, and we are getting the value. And then the third object is also calling, so we are getting these values. This is what constructor. Let us see this practically. So in our Eclipse, already we got class employee. So what I do is I'll take this one, and we write or we create a separate program, new. Same program, a Java class, constructor test, constructor test, main method we have. Now already we got this employee dot Java, a separate program. So in that employee dot Java, what changes we do is we provide in the place of set properties, we just define a constructor. For our understanding, I just write s out system dot out dot println some five stars. We are giving five stars. So emp n no is equal to hundred and one. So emp name in the presentation it was name we given it as e name. E name is Navin and salary five thousand. Five thousand point zero will be assigned to that. So this is what we talk about the. Constructor zero argument constructor zero argument constructor. So in this case, we define the constructor. So compiler will not create a constructor of its own. It, it's own. Now the main method I'm removing from here. Let me have the main method. So we defined a class here. So class employee constructor and display properties. In constructor test dot Java, creating create three 
employ type objects so employ emp1 is equal to new employee the first employee object we are creating the same way the second employee object we are making a copy of that second employee and the third employee so three employee objects we are creating so employee dot class employee class and constructor test dot class let me run this what will be the output three times five starts are being coming from this example we can understand whenever we create an object this constructor will be called and each object can call display properties method so emp1 dot display properties emp2 dot display properties and emp3 dot display properties now each object properties also run as java application we are getting the value so this is what we talk about constructor so two type of constructors one is default constructor zero argument constructor but not this so what constructor created by the compiler is called as default constructor and the compiler will create a constructor only if no constructors are available in the program in the class so here compiler will not create a constructor whereas for constructor test compiler when you when it is being compiled it creates the main method as well as it creates a default constructor hope you are clear with this one happy learning this lesson is about overloading methods so what is basically overloading methods or method overloading is a feature that allows a class to have more than one method having the same name with the different signatures so when we write a class a class we know that a class can have constructors class can have properties class can have methods and every method basically three things are coming one is the return type of the method the second name of the method and the third one parameters these are the three things required for any method so return type name of the method and argument details see in a class if there exists more than one method with the same name but with the different signatures are called as method overloading so what do you mean by method signature name of the method together with argument details is known as method signature see for example every stand alone java program have got public static void main method with the string array one argument so what is the signature of this main method name of the method is main together with argument details how many arguments are there one argument what type of argument is that string array so main with one argument that is string array is what the method signature of main method the next method is about add num so add num method have got two integer parameters return type is not considered at all when we talk about the signature so add num name of the method with the two integer parameters so the name of the method together with the parameter details is known as method signature the method calling signature so method means two things will come one is method definition what that method have to do and the other one is method calling so whenever a method is being called then only it will get executed so method calling signature should be matching with method definition signature and in a class it is not possible to have more than one method with the same signature so return type can be anything so in the method signature return type is not considered at all name of the method together with argument detail so i cannot write suppose in our class we have got main method add num method with the two integer return type is int so i cannot write one more method the return type can be anything void add num again with integer x comma integer y is not allowed so overloading methods are nothing but in a class if there exists more than one method with the same name but with the different signatures so name of the method together with the argument details 
and this overloading may happen in two ways one is by changing the number of arguments so in this add method the signature is add with the two integers the next add method is add with the three integers the number of arguments the first add method have got two arguments the second add method have got three arguments that is one way the signature i mean method overloading is happening the other way method overloading is happening by changing the data type of arguments so in a separate class we have got two add method number of arguments are same two but what is the type the first add method two integers second add method one integer and a float value so the signature the type is different so number of arguments or by the type of argument this is what we talk about method overloading let us see an example let me write a program a new java class we call it as overloading test so in this class itself overloading test we need to have the main method and we define one method so main method is already there void add num it takes no parameters add num we write here s out add num with the zero arguments so add num with zero arguments or parameters this is one method so what's the signature of that add num with the no parameters then another one i have got add num with integer comma integer so first one is no parameter the second add num we are having with the two integers s out we will say add num with the two integers so you can write the business logic also add num with the two parameters add num with the two parameters then one more add method add num method void add num with an integer x comma float so i cannot write one more integer method so we are, we cannot write one more method with the same signature so add num into x and into y and this also into x into y duplicate method add num even if you write the return type it will not consider you cannot define more than one method with the same signature in the same class so void this we may provide it as float type so now there won't be an issue so add num with the two parameters add num with the two parameters int and float so we have got int and float whereas here int and int so we define three methods when you see this overloading test class we have got three methods add num with the no parameter add num with the two integers add num with an integer and a floating point value and also main method now we want to call that method so we will create an object of overloading test obj is equal to new overloading test so we are creating an object of this class then we'll say obj dot obj dot add num 10 comma 23f so what is the signature of this method calling this object is calling add num method with an integer and a floating point value so which method will get executed so method calling signature is add num with the two i mean two parameters first is an integer and second is a floating point value so when you call this what will happen it will call this particular method method definition signature is matching with that let us save this run this program run as java application and see what answer is coming add num with the two parameters int and float now again obj dot add num so i'm not passing any parameters so what's the signature of this add num method add num without having any parameter so which method out of these three add nums which method get executed add num with no parameters will get executed so run this add num with the zero parameters now the same way if you want to call this add num method with the two integers what is that we do obj dot add num 10 comma 20 so what is 10 and 20 10 and 20 are integers 
So it will call the second add num. Add num method with the two integers will get executed. So this is what method overloading. So it will give more readability. So the same method, but the functionality may be different. So add num without having any parameter will have one functionality. Add num with the two integers may have another functionality. Add num with the two parameters, first is integer and second is float have got some other functionality. So for that purpose, we are using method overloading. The next point we need to understand is there is some more one more thing called the type promotion. So what do you mean by type promotion? So when you see type promotion, for example, the same example itself, I'll just comment it. I'm not giving all these methods. So what I told before is the method calling signature should be matching with method definition signature. Now, for example, I have void add num, same method, integer x comma integer y. We just give a message s out inside add num method. So method calling signature should be matching with method definition signature. We can use the same program itself. Now what I do is I have two integers int x is equal to 10 int y is equal to 20. We call obj dot add num 10 comma not 10 comma 20. We will say x comma y. So what happens now? Add num method is being called by passing two integers x and y are two integers. Rather than writing this, let's provide a proper output also. So int n or sum is equal to or long sum is equal to x plus y or int sum is equal to x plus y. We'll say x plus plus symbol x plus y x plus plus y concatenation equal to we want to display the sum sum is being displayed now what happens now x value is 10 you can give it as not x you can give it as any variable name a and b we are calling add the method by passing a as well as b so coming the control will come to add the method x value becomes 10 y value is 20 so method calling and method definition both are same so x plus y 10 plus 20 sum becomes 30 so x value 10 plus this is concatenation operator so that integer is concatenated with a string plus will come as it is plus y value plus equal to sum let's run this 10 plus 20 is equal to 30 we give an integer type now just imagine this b is of a byte type so b is byte so when we are calling this add num method we are passing an integer and a byte variable but do we have a method definition with integer and byte no but still it is not showing any error so we are calling the method by passing a is of int type and b is of byte type so we should have a method definition with the integer and a byte. So for example, if I make it as byte, there won't be an issue. Program will work. And even if it is not, so now the method calling signature is same as that we defined in this method. Let us run this. 10 plus 20 is equal to 30. But I am just converting this to short type. Still it is working. So that means what is happening? type promotion is happening data type promotion is happening what is that one type of argument is promoted to another type implicitly internally one type of data is converted if no matching data type is found in the method definition byte data can be promoted to short int long float or double so if the data is byte it can be promoted to short int long float or double Short can be promoted to into long float or double. Character can be promoted to into long float or double. Float can be promoted to double. Long can be promoted to float or double. This is what we talk about data type promotion. 
So we already seen that example. So add num in the x. So byte is promoted to short. It is working. Byte can be promoted to int working. Byte can be promoted to long, but there may be an error here. So int sum is equal to x plus y. X is integer type. Y is long type. When you perform some operation with integer and a long, it returns a long type value. It returns long type value. Because ad addition, we are performing with an integer and a long type data. So it returns long. If it is integer and a float, it returns float type. If it is integer and uh, double, it returns double type. So now let's run this. We are getting that. So this is what we talk about type promotion. A byte can be promoted to short or int or long or float or double. An int can be promoted to long, float, double, etc. So you can give long. So this is what we talk about type promotion. So one type of data can be promoted to another type implicitly. Now, for example, in this one, if we have got an add num method with the, an integer and a byte. So we got add num with the int and a byte variable, byte b or byte y. So in this case, which method will get executed when you call this? We are calling add num method with the, an integer and a byte. So it will execute surely this add method with the integer and a byte only. So s out sum is equal to we give the value x plus y sum is equal to x plus y so which one will get executed run this it will execute the first method sum is equal to 30 but if you call obj dot add num if you say 10 comma 20 separately if you are giving what is this obj dot add num int and int so it will execute the second method so an integer cannot be promoted to byte, but integer can be promoted to long. So let's run this. This case, 10 and 20 are integers. So run as Java application, we are getting this 10 plus 20 is equal to 30. So what happens in the first case is it is calling, we are passing an integer and a byte. We already got that method. The second case when we are calling, add num method is being called by passing two integers. 10 and 20 both are integers so it will call a function with integer 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 is not there then it will see whether that any type promotion automatic type promotion is happening yes index and long y the second argument integer is promoted to long this is what we talk about method overloading as well as type promotion happy learning So this lesson we are going to talk about overloading constructors or constructor overloading. So what is basically constructor overloading? In a class if there exists more than one constructors with different parameter list. So class contains more than one constructors with different arguments is what we talk about constructor overloading. As an example if you are having a class called student. The student have got three properties, stud ID, student name, stud age, three properties. And we have got three overloaded constructors based on the requirement, the respective constructor get executed. So student with no parameter, one constructor with the two parameters, integer and a string, and the other constructor with the three parameters, integer string as well as age, I mean integer, integer string as well as integer. So we will just see this in a practical way. So in our practical example, we are going to talk about employee class. So we will create our main classes overloading constructors. So overloading constructors contains the main method. And also we have got another class in the same program. We have got another class as employee. So class employee contains three properties, integer, emp, and no. So string name, e name, 
and as well as float salary are the three properties so we are going to create three objects so we are going to create three objects of employee so employee emp1 the first employee reference is equal to new employee this is what the first object is the same way the second object we are creating with the employee number and the employee name okay now we, we will create three employee objects and the third employee emp3 three employee objects so anyway by default the constructor will be available by the compiler or if you want you can create your own constructor employee with no parameter constructor with the zero parameters and also one method get details is one method to display the details of the employee so get details method to display empno a separator we are giving then the name of the employee ename separator plus salary say so employee number employee name as well as salary so class employee contains three properties one constructor without any parameter so whenever you create an object so we are creating three objects so three times the constructor will be called then emp1 dot get details calling the first the first object is calling get details the second object is calling get details and the third object calling get details so we have got three objects and three objects so each object is calling get details method so we know what output is coming by default the state will be zero employee number employee name and salary so zero null and 0.0, .0 is coming by default all these three objects calls the constructor without any parameter employee with no parameter this constructor now just imagine the second object is providing the integer value as well as a string value so the second object is being created by passing an integer and a string but we don't have a constructor with an integer and a string that is why the error is coming here so when you run this what error is coming a compilation error errors exist in this required project proceed what is the error the constructor employee with an integer is undefined so clearly the compiler is telling that you are creating an object of employee with an integer and a string but the respective constructor is not defined so we should have a constructor for employee class integer a and string b so when you define this the error is gone this is the second constructor now the error has gone previously error was there now the error is gone so a value is assigned to emp and no is equal to a and e name is equal to b b value is assigned to e name so when you create the second object new employee 101 and sunil the control will come to this constructor a value becomes 101 b value becomes sunil and that values are being assigned to emp and no of emp2 then b value that is sunil is assigned to e name now when you run this emp2 let us run this program now there won't be any error first object and the third object employee number employee name and salary is 0 null and 0, 0.0 but the second object employee number is 101 employee name is sunil and salary 0, 0.0 this is what the second object now we got two constructors with the different parameter list the first one employee with no parameter second one employee with an integer and a string now for example the third employee object 102 the name of the employee we are giving it as Naveen and the third employee object I mean this one and a salary also we are providing 2500 F a floating point value now the error is coming so there is no constructor with the three parameters integer string and a floating point value so we should have one more constructor i make a copy of this we define one more constructor same constructor is not allowed same signature we'll say int c 
now salary is equal to c so in this class employee contains three properties as well as three constructors employee with no parameter employee with the two parameters and employee with the three parameters this is not integer it should be float type that should be float type so that was the error before now there is no error so a value is assigned to empno b value assigned to e name and c value assigned to c so emp once employee number employee name salary will be 0 null 0, 0.0 because we are not giving any value of our own so the default values will be given at the time of creating an object itself when you create the second object it will be initialized with the 0 null 0, 0 0.0 then after that the constructor will be called a value will be 101 b value is sunil that is assigned to empno e name the same with third object so this is an example of overloading constructors the first object second object we given the employee number as well as employee name salary default value and the third object corresponding state is coming now let us see one another case what change i do is a and b are the variables declared in the constructor whereas empno and e name are the variables declared in the class so these three variables are called as instance variable they are called as instance variable and the variables declared inside a method or in a constructor that's called as local variables so one is instance variable the member data of a class is called as instance variable and the variables declared inside a method this particular parameter or in the main method emp1 emp2 emp3 these are all declared inside the main method so that local variables can be accessed only within that and the instance variable normal member data two type of variables now instance variable as well as local variable now just imagine in the place of a i am giving empn no in the place of b we are giving it as e name so now what is this empn no and e name these two are local variables this is local variables of this constructor whereas what is this two instance variable or three instance variables so a to be replaced with the empn no b to be replaced with the e name now what happens here is when you create the second object 101 and sunil that values will be assigned to this empno and e name empno becomes 101 e name becomes sunil but here this is local variable this one also local variable so we are just assigning the value to the same local variable we have not assigned it to the instance variable in the previous case when we have given a and b second object value was 101 and sunil 0, 0.0 but now when we create this object the employee number employee name and salary will be 0 null 0, 0.0 and no changes are happening in the constructor what is coming here the assignment to variable empn now has no effect yellow colored it's not giving it as an error it's giving it as a warning the assignment to variable empno has no effect now when you run this what is the second object employee number zero but actually we given 101 and sunil but is it coming no why because we have not assigned these values to the instance variable it is only local variable so what all variables are declared in a constructor or in a method that is called as local variable and the member data are called as instance variable so this local variable value should be assigned to instance variable so to tell that we use a keyword called this a reference variable of java a keyword of java acting as the reference of the current object which object is that that object is nothing but this for example my name is sunil sunil joseph 
so when somebody else is calling me they call it with call me with my name sunil joseph but when i talk about myself i say i or me the same with this is a keyword or a reference variable acting as a reference of current object now this emp and now which i selected is a local variable and this dot emp and now becomes an instance variable so local variable value is assigned to instance variable let us run this employee number is coming same way this dot e name is equal to e name so run this we will get the correct answer so the importance of this 101 sunil salary is 0.0 it's always a good now why we had we don't need to write this dot emp and now here because there is no local variable with the name of emp and now a is a local variable but emp and now there is no local variable with the name of emp and now so it will be treated as instance variable so a local variable value is assigned to instance variable but it is always a good practice to represent instance variable with the this dot it is always a good practice to represent local variable with the this keyword so it's sure that it will be an instance variable so let's run this we are getting the correct answer now when you see another use of this keyword is to refer the instance variable and also to call the methods of the class and another use of this one is in the second constructor we say this dot emp and no equal to emp and no this dot e name is equal to e name the same logic only what is happening here also so repetition of code is happening rather than repeating that code what we can do is from this constructor now you see the case of the third object new employee 102 navin and salary it will come to this constructor now we given only the value for salary when you run this only the third object salary will come employee number and name will be null but that logic is already defined in the previous constructor so what i can do is i can call the previous constructor or constructor by passing a and b this is called as constructor chaining so constructor one constructor is calling other constructor this of a comma b a is integer b is string type so we already got a constructor so this should be the first statement this of a comma b constructor chaining so what is the flow of execution when we create the third object new employee with the three parameters control will come to this constructor there what is that we are doing it is calling this of a comma b it will call this constructor so this is what this keyword and it's a must in some situation if the local variable name is matching with the instance variable name to differentiate the local variable with instance variable you should use you should represent with this keyword so what is the role of this this is a keyword or reference variable of java that refers to the current object this can be reused to refer the current class instance variable this can be used to invoke current class method this dot display details and this can be used to invoke current class constructor this with parameter that's what we call it as constructor chaining hope you are clear with this one happy learning so this lesson we are going to understand a banking application based on the concepts that what we studied in the previous lesson like class object constructors method overloading all that so based on that we are developing a banking application a simple application so there we have got a class called uh, account so what are the details that normally comes in a account class it have got some properties like account number name of the account holder as well as the balance amount as well as the functionality is a deposit along with the existing balance this amount what we are passing to be added the second one is withdraw function so there we should be able to 
if the amount is sufficient the balance amount is sufficient we want to withdraw that amount that means subtract the balance with this from this i mean from the balance this amount to be subtracted and if the account is already created show the details also so this is what our account class so first let us implement our account class so inside the same project in eclipse creating a new class with the name of account so inside this account class we have got three properties so that properties are nothing but account number name of the account holder and the balance amount and the functionalities are deposit withdraw and get details so this is what the code we are writing so our class contains three properties account number name of the account holder and balance we got a default constructor and a parameterized constructor so with the account number name of the account holder as well as the balance amount so this dot account number so this is nothing but the constructors we have so we got two constructors we defined so one is constructor without any parameter or argument then constructor with the three parameters it stores the account number name of the account holder and balance long string and float created an account then what are the functionalities we got deposit method we pass a floating point value what what is the logic of that from the along with the existing value of the balance this amount to be added so normally when you deposit some amount in bank account you will get an sms saying that so and so amount is credited to the account and at present the balance is what we are just displaying that in the console then the next method is withdraw withdraw some amount so if you want to withdraw the amount what is the logic the requested i mean the amount which you want to withdraw is it is sufficient in the balance if the balance amount is greater than or equal to amount or if the amount is less than or equal to balance from the current balance that amount is being deducted so we are getting a message repos repeats amount debited what is the balance this dot bal so in case if the condition is not true we are giving an error message to the customer saying that error insufficient balance so this is what our i mean one more method to get the details of the account if the account is already there we want to we want to call this function get a I mean get balance it will display the account number this dot acn now it will display the name of the account holder and the balance amount of that account at that time so three properties and three methods for this account class let me save this have a look into this so three properties two constructors deposit what is the logic of deposit and also we got withdraw method and get account details then we want to develop our actual application a bank app or simply bank a menu driven application create account deposit withdraw details and exit a menu driven application to be displayed so this will come first we want to create an account if the account is already available then only you should allow to deposit the amount then only withdrawal should happen then only details should happen and exit so let me create a separate application new java class bank public static void main so in this we'll have a local variable account acc is equal to null to read the data from keyboard i'm using a scanner so scanner acc reference is equal to new scanner from where from the keyboard system dot in we want to read the data from keyboard available in java dot util package to read the data so continue the process while true infinite loop this is what the end of while loop what is required there a menu s out one we have create account or a new account any message you can write based on your requirement create account the second operation is to deposit the third one s out system control and space bar 
control key and space bar 3 withdraw the fourth one what is that the fourth one details account details or balance details yes out exit a menu driven application after that we should ask the customer i mean the bank officer to so remember this application is a very basic application just to understand class object constructors methods used in a real project where it is used and we are not working with multiple accounts also only one account we are working with now s out we should ask that officer the bank officer to enter an option what the customer wants to do so let i'm mean not let int opt is equal to sc dot next int so enter an option an option is being entered so once you enter the option that option may be an, a number it may be one or it may be two or three or four or five or it may be other than that so there we can use the switch case we use switch opt the switch means the case may be one break case may be two so what is case may be one create account if the case is two make a copy of this what is this case two if the option entered is deposit the other one option three withdraw option four get the details we are making a structure of our project case five terminate exit application or terminate application to terminate application running to terminate the application we just give a message s yes, out bye bye so something like that we are just providing bye bye and we want to terminate the program so which java statement is used to terminate the program we say system dot exit yes system dot exit with an exit handler zero so this is what the java statement used for terminating a program system dot exit the application will be closed then if the option may be other than one to five that we, we call it as default we can give a message saying that invalid option invalid option try again so let us display the loop once again this is what the end of switch we just give a separator so the structure of the application is done so system dot exit to terminate the application and default case that option what you have entered is not correct it is not one two three or four four or five so if it is one or two or three or four what what is that you need to do for deposit deposit means now let's see what happens is run as java application a menu is being shown asking me to enter create account because no operations are given so nothing is working deposit if i say an option six it is an invalid option what is coming invalid option try again if i provide the option five bye bye and the application is terminated this is what the structure now what i need is when you talk about deposit or withdraw deposit or withdraw or get details should happen only if the account is available if acc not equal to null if the account is available that means it is not equal to null what is that we need to do enter the customer ask the customer how much amount he want to deposit enter amount to deposit say so enter amount to deposit will say float amount is equal to ssc dot next float to read the data from keyboard a floating point value to read we use scanner dot next float we got the amount this amount to be passed to account objects deposit method for that purpose 
ACC is the account reference dot deposit by passing that amount. This is what the logic for deposit. If the account is not equal to null, that means account is null. We can give an information to the bank officer for your information. Create account first. In a bank, account is required, then only he can do any operation. Now, what else we need to do for the second one, withdraw? What logic to be done for withdraw? So, withdraw also, if the account is already available, if it is not equal to null, enter amount to withdraw. Float amount is withdraw and you call the method by using ACC. What is ACC? Account reference. So, we will create an object. So, ACC dot withdraw. For your information, create account first. A C C O U N T. Create account first. The same way details. What is that details? There also, if the account is available, if the account is already there, then we will call the deposit method. A C C object is calling get. What is that method we got? What method is to get the details? Get balance method. So call the get balance method. Get balance method. Call that get balance method. Create account first. So that's deposit, withdraw, and getting the balance also we define. 5, 6 also. Now let's run this. When you run this application, it is asking create account, nothing is done. Deposit, what message we will get now? Create account first. For your information, create account first. We provide the option 3, create account first. 4, create account first. 5, terminate the program. Alright, so now we are only left out with to create an account. So if the user enters an option 1, you, you have to see whether the account is not existing if ACC is equal to equal to null then only we can create a new account else case we will give a message s yes, out for your information account is already created so i don't want to change that account account is already created so if the account is not yet created in this application normally in a real banking application account will be account number will be auto generated but in this case, we will enter the account number, system.out.print, enter account number. But in a real application, account number will not be entered. So account number long ACC or ACNO is equal to SC.next long. To enter a long value, we will say SC.next long. So just imagine we entered a number. A long lengthy account number suppose I enter 10025 something we have entered after that we will press the enter key then next to one we want is account holder name system dot out dot print enter account holders name so string name is equal to SC dot next line to read one line of data from the keyboard. The scanner object is already created that is connected to system dot in. So we are reading the data SC dot next long. So we already know how to read the data from keyboards and all. So enter account holder from our previous codes. You will get that. So enter account holders name. We got that. Yes out. The next one is what? Enter initial deposit enter initial deposit so how much is the initial deposit so that is a float value float amount is equal to sc dot next float so we have got next float we got that all the details after getting that create account object to create account object already acc is reference is there new account by passing the account number name of the account holder and the amount initial deposit amount so we can say yes out, out account created 
account object is created so new account account number name as well as amount so what happens now it will go to account class and the constructor will be called and that account number what we have passing that is assigned to that object's account number with reference the name and balance so account is created now let's run so there is one small issue let's see run as java application you see very carefully i'll give the option 1 enter account number 10025145 is account number what happens now after entering the account number i given i pressed enter key when i press the enter key it will just display this message but it's not allowing me to enter the name of that account holder it's asking me to directly enter the name so when you press enter key this function is already executed so to take care of this issue just below this you just write next line to take care of that uh, enter key i just give next line scanner dot next line now you run this understand the first option one enter account number one zero zero two five one zero two three is account number when i press enter this function will take care of that so it is asking me to enter the name of the account holder i am just entering sunil joseph initial deposit may be 25000 rupees or dollars or pound or yen or whatever it is 25000 so what has happened account is created so the account number is this name of the account holder is sunil joseph and deposit method now i want to provide an option 4 so when i provide option 4 what it will do it will call the get balance method account number because we have given option is for case for accounts not equal to null yes correct acc dot get balance the current object is calling get balance method account number in the same line all the details will be given so account number name of the account holder and the balance amount now i want to deposit some amount maybe two thousand five hundred dollars or rupees so deposit to enter amount to deposit 2500 so what should be the message we get so enter deposit amount credited rupees so and so amount credited to 2500 credited current balance is what the balance is 27500 rupees 2500 credited balance is this whatever the currency symbol you want you can provide there so i'll just provide again to 2500 again we are depositing so balance is 30000 get the details for i want to withdraw 35000 dollars or rupees what will happen error insufficient balance now i want to withdraw so we will say option 4 no 3 i want to withdraw 30000 it is sufficient the account balance will be zero now we are terminating the application or if i provide any other option any other number invalid option try again and i'll say four details and we will say five terminate the program a real application to understand class object constructors methods all that hope you are clear with this one happy learning So here we are talking about the next one important feature of OOPS is nothing but inheritance. So what is basically inheritance or why we go for inheritance? Just imagine in our project, in our application, if we need to have two or more than two classes, which has got some common properties or common functionalities, rather than writing the code in each more than the two classes rather than writing the code we can do the concept of inheritance so what is basically inheritance by using inheritance what is that we are getting so inheritance is a mechanism in which an oops principle in which one object 
acquires all the properties and behaviors of the parent object or we are creating a concept from an already existing concept or concepts now why do we need to go for inheritance concept what is the importance of that so some common properties and methods what are properties member data or attributes and methods are required by few classes in a project hence they have to be implemented in all those classes normally the common properties are required in multiple classes you have to write that code even the functionality also to avoid code redundancy duplication of code a class is developed with the common attributes and methods and it is used as a base class for the derived classes so in a project if two or more than two classes required some common properties and methods rather than writing in each and every class we defined that in a separate class as a use case we have a banking project and we know in a bank one type of account is savings account and savings account have got account number the basic requirements account number name of the account holder balance amount and rate of interest maybe 3.5 percentage annually then the functionalities are deposit withdraw get balance calculate interest these are the functionalities of savings account and the other type of account we have is current account in a bank we got current account that current account have got account number name balance and our bank in a financial year there will be some limited number of transactions will allow for example 12 transactions may be allowed but apart from that 12 more than 12 if the transaction is happening the bank will charge some service amount service charge they will collect suppose the default the uh, the minimum i mean the number of transaction the free transaction allowed is 12 in a financial year but if that customer have done maybe 15 transactions so how much service charge to be calculated have to be collected 15 minus 12 and if it's a 1 dollar or 100 rupees so that additional transaction 3 into 100 that much amount to be collected so deposit withdraw get balance service charge so when you see these two classes in both these two classes account number name balance deposit withdraw get balance are common so what inheritance says is don't write that don't you should not have code redundant i mean uh, duplication of code so what is the best one create a separate class called account in this class we define the account number name and balance deposit withdraw and get balance methods we define and you create the savings account and current account from the account class this is what we talk about inheritance so what is the benefit we are getting the savings account and current account are the extensions of account other than private properties whatever other than private properties and methods will be inherited to savings account and current account it's nothing but extensibility so no so that no need of having the account number name balance deposit withdraw get balance in savings account the same properties and methods are not required in the current account only the additional properties and methods are sufficient in this one this is what inheritance is now what are the different types i mean what are the keywords used for inheritance one is extends and the other one is implements so implements keyword we will discuss in the coming lessons extends and implements now class savings account extended from account or current account extended from account implements is used with interfaces in the coming lessons we'll talk about that so savings account current account so savings account is an account so it's nothing but is a relationship savings account is a child of account or savings account is an account current account is an account so it's a is a relationship exists between two objects the parent class is called as the super class so in object oriented programs some languages we call it as base class and derived class the newly created class is derived class in some programming languages we call it as
parent class and subclass but in java the newly created class is called as the child class and the class from which it is created is super class so account is the super class savings account is child class current account is child class account so savings account and current account are child classes of account the child classes inherit all the members non private if it is private it is specific to that class only of the parent class the child class also have their distinctive members so what are the distinctive members of savings account it is interest what method wise calculate i mean uh, calculate interest current account number of transactions service charge calculate service charge whatever it is so that method is specific distinctive distinctive members of the child class now what are the different types of inheritance the different types of inheritance are one is called as single inheritance we got class a from class a we are creating a new class called b and when you create an object of b that object is able to access its own members and also the members of class a the second one hierarchical inheritance class a from this class a we are creating multiple child classes b c d that's what hierarchical the other one multi level a b c b is a child class of class a and class c is a child class of b when you create an object of c that object can access its own members members of c that of b and that of a the next one multiple inheritance so we have got two different classes class a and b each class have got its own properties and methods and from class a and class b we create a new class called class c so as per oops not in java as per basically object oriented programming class c object can access its own members and also the members of a and b and we will see is there any issue with this one also then the same way the combination of hierarchical multi level and multiple inheritance is what we call it as hybrid inheritance class a from class a two child classes b and c what is that inheritance hierarchical inheritance from b and c we create a new inheritance called i mean new child class called class d from b and c what is that multiple and levels are there level 0 and level 1 multi level is happening so that's what we talk about multi level inheritance i mean this is what hybrid inheritance so combination of all these three now let's think about multiple inheritance in detail so when you see multiple inheritance in detail let's say i got a class called a one simple class a this class have got a method called void display one simple example void display so this void display have got a line of code system dot out dot print ln of capital a we are just displaying capital a this is class a the same way one another class we are having we are just talking about is there any issue with this multiple inheritance class b this b class contains a method called disp so this have got a statement system dot out dot print ln it will display capital b system dot out dot print ln b all right so two independent classes from this two classes we want to create a new class c an extension of a and b class c an extension of a and b now if you say c i am creating an object of c c is a class object type object reference is obj and the object is new c created an object after that using that object we call display method when you call that display method normally what happens it will call the display it will see it will see whether that method is directly available here no if it is not there what it will do it will check it in the parent class yes it is available in class a so the output will be capital a then obj dot disp calling that disp method not available directly in class c so it will check it in the super classes 
A and B. This is available. The output will be B. So the answer is A B. But just imagine if this class B contains a method called same method display A and B. There is no relation at all. So B also contains the same method display, and when you try to access that obj dot display, what happens? Directly display is not available in its own class, but display is available in both the parent classes. So now, whenever a method is called, it can execute only one method. Now the Java is in a confusion like us: which display method to be executed? Anyway, both display it cannot execute by default. So which display method should it be executing? Which display method to be executed? So Java will think. Do I need to execute display of class A, or do I need to execute display of class B? So this cannot make a decision. This results in an error, and this type of error is what we call it as ambiguity error. Ambiguity error. So because of a chance of ambiguity error in Java, in the case of inheritance, multiple inheritance, Java will not allow us to create. More than one a class from more than one classes after extends keyword, we can provide only one class. After extends keyword, we can provide only one class name. Why this concept is given? In order to overcome ambiguity error, a class cannot be extended from more than one classes. But then a question comes: Does Java supports multiple inheritance? Yes. Java supports multiple inheritance through interfaces. We talk about interfaces in the coming lessons. But if a question comes, does Java supports multiple inheritance? Yes, Java supports multiple inheritance through interfaces. So class, my class, I can make my class implemented from multiple interfaces, inter one and inter two. My class is a class which is implemented from. For inheritance, two keywords are used. One is extends, and the other one is implements. So this class is implemented from. This class is implements. I M P L E implemented from inter one and inter two. Or there is interface. An interface can be created from interface inter three, extends inter one comma. In the two, what is interface and all, we'll discuss in the coming lessons. So interface in the three extended, but in Java, a class can be extended from only one class. This feature is given in order to overcome ambiguity error. Hope you are clear with this one. Happy learning. So inheritance practicals. So let's consider. We got a class called a simple class called base class. It has got two properties A and B, and also it has got a method called display A B. So what that uh, display A B is doing is it will say in base class the A and B values will be displayed. That means 10, 20 will be displayed. So whenever you create an object of base, and we can access A B as well as display A B. But my requirement is we need to have a class that should have three properties: a, b with the same value of 10, 20, as well as c, maybe 30, and also we need to have a method display a, b, c. So for that purpose, what what we do is already a and b is available. Display a, b is already there. So what we do is we'll create a child class of base with the name of derived. It has got so by default. If you say extends base, whatever properties and methods are available in base is available for the object of derived. Plus, in addition to that, we are providing c is equal to thirty and display a b c. So when you see this class derived, it has got only c is defined, but actually it can access the members of base also. That's the reason why we are able to write a b as well as c. Then we write the main class as a inheritance test one. Main method we are creating an object of derived, so that object can access its own members directly C, and also it can access the members of its super class, which is nothing but base A and B are defined in the base class. We can access, 
and when you say display ab obj is the object of derived it will see whether that method is available in its own class not there so if it is not available it will take it from the base class that means super class so we'll get the output in base class a will be 10 and b will be 20 and display abc that method is directly available in its own class so we'll get the output in derived class a will be taken from the base so 10 20 and 30 this will be the output so let's see this practically in our eclipse so the same program is available base derived and inheritance test one so let us run this program when we run as a java application what output is that we are getting line number 21 it gives you 10 20 30 obj reference of or instance of derived a value is nothing but 10 b is 20 and c is 30 display a b in base class a value 10 and b value 20 and then obj or display abc in derived class abc same like you can create uh, savings account and extension of account and current account and extension of account so practical of inheritance hope you are clear with this one happy learning so this lesson is about overriding members so what is overriding members so it's nothing but a feature so we have seen that in inheritance the child class can access the members of the super class but if some methods available in the super class, if you define the same methods in the child class also, because we want to have some additional functionality. And that is what we talk about overriding. So for example, in the previous lesson in inheritance, we've seen current account and also savings account are the two type of accounts we have. Both are child classes of account. So account have got deposit in current account we need to get the transaction count which is not required for the savings account so transaction count is nothing but if you perform a deposit or a withdraw operation or get balance method what we need is the transaction count to be increased apart from adding the amount with the existing balance or deducting the amount from the existing balance based on the functionality we need to add some additional coding also in the current account so for that purpose we should define the same methods in the super class in the child class whatever the methods are there in the super class if you want to add some additional functionality we need to define in the child class also and that's what we talk about overriding and this is the way in which we achieve runtime polymorphism so in the lesson we will see about polymorphism as a practical scenario when you see overriding test derived obj is equal to new derived creating an object so this is what the two overridden members so all together the object of derived have got four members a and b of its own and a and b of the super class now when you run this we will get a value of derived that is 11 b of 11 i mean b of derived 22 and obj dot display this statement get executed so let me run this so when you run this 11 22 in derived class 11 22 again 11 22 but what i need is we want to access so when you create an object of derived and accessing the display control will come here from there we want to access the members a and b of its own class if you want you can say this keyword also this dot a or directly b and the same way we want to access the members of the super for that purpose we use a keyword called super i'll say super dot a so it will access a of the super that means base the same way super dot b super dot b super is a keyword of java this acting as a reference of the current object same way super super reference now what happens when you say obj dot display the control will come to this class display method in derived class this dot a that is 11 b 22 super dot a 
what is the value of super dot a 10 will be the value super dot b 20 and if you want to call from here we want to call the display method of the super class so this child class object should be able to access its own members and also the members of the super class so for that purpose we say super dot display super dot display now we run this we'll get the output as 1122 of this line of code display method in derived class this dot a 11 b 22 super dot a value is 10 super dot b 20 super dot display it will call the display method of the super class so because of that we are getting in base class 10 20 so inside derived class method if we use super that refers to base because base is a super class and when you see class base is it a child class can you use super keyword inside this display method when you see this class there is no extends keyword but remember in java every class is a child class of java.lang.object which is treated as the first class of the java apis collection of classes there should be a starting the starting class is java.lang.object so just to show you i'm just creating a new class called test i'm just creating a class called test the eclipse is telling that what is the super class of test java.lang.object so every class a child class of java.lang.object the reason is java so every object have got some common functionalities like some some sort of locking two string hash code so comparing two objects these are all common methods which is required for all objects so rather than defining that common methods in each and every class separately what java made a class called as java.lang.object and they made a rule that every class what you create should be a child class of java.lang.object so that is why we say the default inheritance in java is is a relationship the default type of relationship is is a relationship so when you see the command prompt we use java p java.lang.object so these methods are accessible for all the objects so i can use in simple words in this display method also i can use super keyword and that super refers to what java.lang.object and these are all the methods that we are able to access so this is what we talk about overriding hope you are clear with this one happy learning